ಸ್ವಾಮಿರಾಂದಸ್ಯಾನಾಂಜನಶಲಾಖ ಚಕ್ಷುಗೋನ್ಮೀಲಿ ಜೇನ ತಸ್ಮೈ ಶ್ರೀಗುರವೇ ನಮಃ ನಮಾ ಓಂ ವಿಷ್ಣುಪಾದಯ ಕೃಷ್ಣಪೃಷ್ಠಾಯ ಭೂತಲೆ ಶ್ರೀಮತೆ ಭಕ್ತಿ ವೇದಾಂತಸ್ವಾಮಿ ನಾಮಿನೆ ನಮಸ್ತೆ ಸಾರಸ್ವತೆ ದೇವೇ ಗೌರವಾಣಿ ಪ್ರಚಾರಿಣೆ ನಿರ್ವಿಶೇಷ ಶೂನ್ಯವಾದೀ ಪಾಶ್ಚಾತ್ಯ ದೇಶಧಾರಿಣೆ ವಾಂಛಾಕಲ್ಪತರುಭ್ಯ ಕೃಪಾ ಸಿಂಧುಭ್ಯ ಪತಿ ವೈಷ್ಣವೇಭ್ಯೋ ನಮೋ ನಮಃ ಜಯ ಶ್ರೀ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಚೈತನ್ಯ ಪ್ರಭು ನಿತ್ಯಾನಂದ ಶ್ರೀ ಅದ್ವೈತ ಗದಾಧರ ಶ್ರೀವಾಸಾದಿ ಗೌರಭಕ್ತ ವೃಂದ ಹರೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಹರೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣ 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 ಹರಿ ಹರೇ ಹರೇ ರಾಮ ಹರೇ ರಾಮ 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 ಹರೇ ಹರೇ ಹೂ ಕ್ಯಾನ್ ರೀಡ್ ದ ಹೆಡಿಂಗ್ ಹೌ ದಿಸ್ ಮೈ Preaching with knowledge, conviction and compassion. Okay. So here is Srila Prabhupada giving a lecture. Uh, see, there is a uh, humor in Prabhupada's smile and, and all the devotees are uh, resonating with that humor. Correct, no? You can see that. So, Prabhupada presented the philosophy so powerfully and so joyfully. Everybody became convinced by his powerful, effective presentation. So, therefore, we should present the philosophy with the, first with knowledge. Uh, read it. Knowledge of Krishna's ownership and enjoyership. This is the most foundational thing. Esha vasyam idam sarvam yatkincha jagatyam jagat. Correct? Tena tyak tena bhunji tha. ಮಾಗೃದಕ್ಕಸ್ಯ ಸಿದ್ಧನ ಸೊ ದಿಸ್ ಇಸ್ ಅ ವೆರಿ ಇಂಪಾರ್ಟೆಂಟ್ ಡಿಸ್ಕಷನ್ ಇನ್ ದ ವೈದಿಕ್ ಲಿಟ್ರೇಚರ್ ದ ವೆರಿ ಫಸ್ಟ್ ಥಿಂಗ್ ಇಸ್ ಎವ್ರಿಥಿಂಗ್ ಇಸ್ ಓನ್ ಟು ಬೈ ಸುಪ್ರೀಂ ಲಾಡ್ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಯು ಆರ್ ಅಲ್ ಟು ಟೇಕ್ ಯುವರ್ ಕೋಟಾ ಬಟ್ ಯು ಕೆನಾಟ್ ಉಸರ್ಪ್ ದ ಪ್ರಾಪರ್ಟಿ ಆಫ್ ಎನಿಬಡಿ ಎಲ್ಸ್ ವಿಚ್ ಇಸ್ ಅಲಾಟೆಡ್ ಬೈ ದ ಲಾಡ್ ಸೊ ವೈ ದಿಸ್ ಓನರ್ಶಿಪ್ ಇಸ್ ಇಂಪಾರ್ಟೆಂಟ್ ಪ್ರಭಾತ್ ವಾಸ್ ಒನ್ ಸಿಟಿಂಗ್ ಇನ್ ಅಡಿ ಕಾಲ್ ಲಾಫ್ಟ್ One small Iskand temple was in a loft in those days. Prabhupada said, see, we are able to sit here because the lady has allowed us to be a tenant hmm? and we are paying her monthly rent. You stop paying the monthly rent, she will kick us out. <laughs> huh? He said, so we are not the owner, we are tenant, he said. So the owner is different. In the same manner, this material world, the living beings come with empty hand, enjoy and exploit this world and they live with empty hands. Huh? so they don't bring anything so this is a very important foundational concept uh, which is called proprietorship or ownership explained in the bhagavad gita and uh, why this is very important the owner of an object only can enjoy that object correct no say for example you have your pen if i want to use it i need to take your permission if i want to enjoy writing with your smooth gel pen say you have a gel pen i have a simple pen so i can take it from you but i need your permission proper said that proper was sitting with devotees he said see i have a pen here if you want to you use this pen you have to take my permission proper said <laughs> because it's my pen you have to ask me and then only you can use and we all do that in this world right do you take anybody's bike without taking the permission you want to do that because owned by somebody so your bike is owned by somebody pen is owned by somebody similarly this whole world is owned by whom krishna says that bhumi rapanulla vayu kammana buddhi reva cha ahankara etiyam may that may is very important ahankara etiyam may binna apakrishta my who is saying that krishna is saying similarly aparayam itastanya prakritim vidhi may param again another time he says may uh, behind, behind the, besides this uh, material world there is also another spiritual world which is also who he says may he says mine he says so therefore that means krishna claims in uh, son chapter 4th and 5th verse material world belongs to me spiritual world belongs to me both belong to me that means if you want to use anything in the material world whose permission you need therefore we offer bhoga to him and eat prasad krishna you created this world and you have made all these eatables so we are offering it to you thanking you and when you give the sanction then only we accept and uh, like we have made this building now why do we do bhumi puja correct no in bhumi puja lord krishna is worshiped huh? and ananta shesha is put in the ground below before you make any temple or building why because you know that actually we cannot do 
uh, use the building materials without large sanction. Therefore, in Mandalay's periodic table, there are 120 elements. You know that? The top we should put Krishna, the proprietor of these 120 elements. <laughs> have they put that? So they have not put that. means they are thieves. See, if you take somebody's commodity without their permission, that means who are we? Dar Krishna says that. 3.11 Bhagavad Gita. Krishnan bhogan hivo deva dasyante yajna babitaha tairdatana pradayaibhyo yo bhungte stena eva saha. You will see there. Where he says this. Will you repeat this? Ishtan. Uh-huh. Acha, it's not wrong. Uh-huh. Ishtan bhogan ki bhodeva. Dasyante yajna bhavitaha. Tairdatana pradayai bhyo. Yobhungte ste na eva saha. This is 3.12. See here in the picture, in the flow chart, you see. Now, Vishnu or Krishna, he sends empowered administrators, devatas, and they give light, air, water, everything, sun, you know, wind, agni, vayu, varna, everything, they are providing all necessities of life. And then the yajnas are done for the pleasure of the Lord. Devatas actually accept the yajnas. Then there is no scarcity of supply of all these things. And then if one does not offer to the demigods and enjoys the gifts without offering back to the demigods, he is a thief, he says. And below you see, but those who do yajna, what happens, performance of yajna has many benefits. Eatables become sanctified, and eating sanctified food, existence become purified, and finer tissues of memory are developed. Memory is sanctified, one leads back to Krishna. You see? Yeah, in this way. Yeah, here you see. See how nature is happy. <laughs> see this uh, plant is dancing, you see, eh? in rains. You know. Yeah, Ahar Shuddha Sattva So they are all uh, produced by... See, no one can manufacture any of these things. Therefore, who is the owner of all these things? Krishna says that everything is supplied by him. See here. Just now we all finished the prasad. <laughs> yeah. Isn't it? So he is giving sunlight, moonlight, Vedas, digestive fire, all these things he is providing. See, here is a family who is eating without offering to Krishna. Huh? They are compared to what below? Thief. <laughs> thief is guilty because he is taking dollar bags and running away. Police is chasing, I thief, you know, without offering to Because they don't know who wants it. See, in the Vedic times, there are pancha yajna. See, there is a Veda yajna, Dru yajna, Bhuta yajna, and Deva yajna, and uh, uh, Rishi yajna. Huh? So that means you have. Uh, like here he is giving money to a beggar or atithi, uh, brahmanas, giving charity. That's called as an you know, yajna. Uh. Then the right side you find uh, cows, dogs. Cow gives you milk, dogs give you protection to the house. You know, horse gives you a ride. You know, like that all these poor animals, they are domestic animals. They don't want to live in jungle. They want to live with humans in the homes. Uh. So one should protect them by offering them care. Correct, no? So that's called as bhuta yajna. So there's Bhuta Yajna, there's Nru Yajna, uh, and also uh, um, Deva Yajna means the Devatas uh, give us the rains and sun and moon, moonlight, sunlight, wind, rains, grains, fruits, everything. So that is doing Yajna for them. Or the Supreme Lord Krishna wants you to do Yajna. Hmm? Deva Yajna. And then there is also, uh, uh, what do you call it? Pitri Yajna, huh? sorry, Rishi, uh, Rishi, Rishi. Actually, the Rishis have given us teachings and instructions and guidance. Huh? So, in order to respond back to that, one should uh, uh, study those scriptures and teachings left behind by them. And that is where you can, uh, you know, complete your debt to them. Correct, no? Mm-hmm. Similarly, the one has to recite the Vedic mantras and propitiate Lord and the Devatas. Huh? So that's what is five great sacrifices. And in this con moment, all these things are automatically taken care of when you do Sankirtan Yajna and also you distribute prasadam, you know, you distribute the holy name, you know, and uh, distribute the holy books. So all these yajnas are taken care of. Uh, 
Si Brahma yagnya pitra yagnya dewa yagnya buta yagnya nri yagnya all are explained. Yeah, Lord Sankirtan yagnya for all especially in this age of Kali Yuga. Yeah. Yagnya shishta shana santo mucchante sarva gil vishayhi bhungta tete tvagham papa ye padanti atma karanat yeah. Devotees are called santas. Huh? They offer the food uh, to the Lord with love to Vishnu or Krishna. Hmm? And they are always in love with the Lord. So they become free from uh, sinful contaminating association. And then, you know, they offer other sacrifices apart from the food offering to Vishnu. They are also doing Shavanam, Kirtanam, Saranam, Archanam, correct? Navida Bhakti. They are doing all these things. Hmm? And non devotees, red color is given, see below. They prepare food for whose enjoyment? Personal enjoyment. They are compared to thieves and they eat sinful food and they can never be happy. Because a thief can be peaceful and the thief sees police is afraid. Huh? Can't be happy. Yeah, see here are the devotees offering fruits. If that is truth, they are welcoming Krishna. Yeah? So, see these are all devotees. Yeah. yeah, it goes on like this. So, the idea is the proprietorship is glorified here. So, uh, First thing is the ownership of, that's why I told the acceptance of God. God is the owner of this universe. Everything is owned by Him. He is the enjoyer and we are His. That's one verse which Krishna says, you know. Aham kisarva yajnanam, you know that. Bhokta cha prabhure vacha natamama vijananti tatpe natas chavantite. He says, if somebody doesn't know that I am the, I am sarva yajnanam bhokta. If they don't know that I am ultimately the recipient of all the uh, worship and sacrifices, I am the ultimate God. If people don't know, they will fall down, he says. Tatve natas chavanti. Chavanti means to fall down. Huh? Actually, people who don't know about God, they are the ones who commit sinful activities in this world. Huh? Because of blindness and ignorance and darkness, they indulge in passionate and uh, tamaguni activities. Huh? So he says that. Uh, so people may ask, why should you offer boga to Lord and why should you bow down to Him? Huh? That, that is because he's the owner, huh? he's the boss. Hey, can you, in the company, can you get promotion without pleasing the boss? If possible, at home, for example, without obeying your father and mother, can you live peacefully at home? Huh? Similarly, you find in a country, uh, like for example, you go to school, you make the loss or the school principal makes the loss? When you go to company, the company decides what time siren will be blown or you decide. Correct, no? You are obedient to the company loss. At home, you are obedient to home loss. Uh, uh, when you are uh, studying in a college, you are obedient to college loss. Correct, no? You tell me one place where you go, where there are no laws above your head, which you are following. <laughs> Show me. Everywhere you will find. Either you are a law-abiding citizen or a law-breaking citizen. Law-abiding citizens are in the state and law-breaking citizens are in the jail. So nobody is independent. That should be understood. That's the main point, first point. This is how Prabhupada very powerfully presented the philosophy. Nobody could deny it. Huh? The, the knowledge is required. Read that. Theoretical knowledge. If sense gratify is attractive for us, how will we save them? Yeah. So, if you are a preacher, we ourselves have to go beyond the mad attraction for sense and jamin. Because then the boys will ask you, Prabhuji, you talk about the big thing, you talk about the They will say like that. Correct, na? They will ask you. Correct, na? So therefore, uh, you, we have to ourselves be sense controlled, hmm? reaching to them. Yeah. Knowing sense gratification is poison. That day I spoke elaborately on this. Correct, no? You remember what example I gave? That example of mango juice, over drinking, huh? <laughs> is it not true? Huh? So in this way, you will find that actually you can have a pratyaksha experience that sense gratification is poison. See, I heard one story. One fellow mm, was caught by the police. The police told him that, see, you have committed a big blunder and we want to, we are going to punish you. But you have three choices. Either you have to drink five kilo ghee or we will, we will uh, uh, and you have to pay a fine of rupees 50,000 yeah? or we will beat you up 50 times. Uh, which one you want? Which one you think anybody will accept? He, he has uh, how many kilos? That five kilos. Five kilos. Amazing. Is it a gift or a punishment? And they said it is a punishment. They said, and this fellow agreed. 
So then they brought the liquid ghee for him to drink. So as he drank, even before drinking, you know, 200 ml, 300 ml, even before drinking half uh, kg also ghee, he was feeling, you know, he was feeling uh, some kind of vomiting sensation. He asked the police, can I carry home slowly? I can cook, you know, for a few weeks. Few months. They said, hey, this is a punishment. You are supposed to drink all the five liters you have to drink. He said, no, 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 marajanga. They said, no. Either you drink, otherwise what is the next punishment? 50,000 you have to pay. This was 50,000, my lord. How will I pay such a big amount? And that too as a fine. You know, it's not even an investment. I have to just give it away, 50,000. He said, that's impossible, he said. Then they said, third possibility is what? Beating, 50 beating. He said, I think that is all right, I think. He said. <laughs> Then they started beating, part, part, part. After five, six beating, he shouted, hey, marjaunga, marjaunga, maro mat. He said, you only agreed. They said, no, no, no. He said, now it's becoming too much. They said, no, no. That's the third option. All the other two options are ruled out. They said. So why I'm telling you this, sense education is like this in this world. Initially, it will appear like attractive ghee. And you may think that, how many of you experience when you see the gulab jamun in a bucket, it appears you want to eat everything. Your experience correct, no? But after eating four or five, you are finished. <laughs> it's like that ghee drinker, correct? No? The sense of education is called as happiness in view out of experience. What is it? Yeah. Like many uh, showrooms they keep, no? You can see, but you can't touch it because it's inside a glass box. Correct? No? It's like that. Happiness in view, but out of experience. So, in this way, Initially, the sense education is attractive like the ghee. Eventually, you get beating <laughs> like that. That's the way the sense education is as well. Yeah. Sambandh Gyan, most confidential Gyan. Yeah. So, Sambandh Gyan means Sambandh between three people, Krishna, Maya and Jiva. Anybody can tell me what Sambandh between Krishna and Maya? There is one shloka. One shloka, anybody? No. Mama Maya. No, what is that verse? Daivi Hesha Gunamayi, Mam. Mama Maya means Krishna says Maya is whose Maya? Mine. That means Maya belongs to Krishna. She is owned by Krishna. He's the, I mean, Krishna is the master of Maya. One should know that. Unlike the Christians who think Maya is actually a direct uh, combat of Krishna, I mean, combat of God, they think like that. So they think, you know, they think uh, Dim, I mean, Satan is as powerful as God. They think like that. Is it true? No, Saturn is an energy of God. Just like, for example, the jail, jails in India are also uh, uh, I mean, belonging to the Prime Minister of India. As much as the schools and colleges and, you know, everything is belonging to Prime Minister, correct, no? Both are energies of the Prime Minister. Good citizens, he puts them in schools, colleges for education. Bad citizens, he puts them in jail. Both are under the Prime Minister, not that they can overpower Prime Minister, correct, no? So, we have to clearly know that point. When we have to be Bhakti Yogena Manasi Samyak Pranihite Amale Apashyan Purusham Purnam Mayam Cha Tat Apashrayam. That was his important. He saw Krishna, he saw Maya, but Maya was under the control of Krishna. Maya was not equal to Krishna. Maya cannot overpower Krishna. But Maya can only control Jiva. Maya is actually, Maya is Krishna Dasi and she will only do what Krishna orders her to do. Therefore, Maya is a sister of Krishna. Hmm? So, therefore, something I mean, it's Krishna and Maya relation we should know. And then Maya and Jiva, who can say one shloka? Maya and Jiva relationship. Krishna Bhuliya say Jiva, Anadi Bahir Mukha, you know that? Atayeva Maya Deya, Samsara Dukha. What is the meaning of that? A long, long period of time, Jiva has turned his back to Krishna. And because of that, Maya is giving him suffering, he's saying. That means if you turn towards Krishna, Maya will stop punishing you. No? You have turned your back to Krishna and doing. There is one verse which says, Janasya Krishna, Vimukasya Daivat, Adharmashila. If you turn back to Krishna, then what do you do? You do Adharmashila activities. And the result is uh, suffering. Because ignorance leads to sin, sin leads to suffering. Like that. So, that is Maya. There is one more verse also, Maya and Jiva. Krishna Bhuliya Sayi Jiva, Bhogavan Chakare, then. Nikatastha maya tare dapati yadare, correct? No? So, immediately maya captures a person if he gets into Bhagavan Chakra, Chakare. When he forgets Krishna and gets into Bhagavan Chakra. Okay, now what is the sambandha between Jiva and Krishna? Anybody can tell? 
Hey, you should not say, boy should. <laughs> you are a preacher. <laughs> preacher only is answering. Huh? These are all programs for training the preachers. Huh? Yeah? Which one? Who can tell the verse number? 15.7. What is that? Mame Vam Show, Jeeva Loke, Jeeva Bhuta. For how long are we, how long are we Amsha of Krishna? Sanatana. Eternally we are part and parcel. We are always servant of Krishna. Part is a part, whole is a whole. Repeat. That means Jiva will remain Jiva only. Jiva will never become God. Because he says, Mamayo Amsha, Jiva Loki, Jiva Bhuta, Sanatana. Mayavadi says, Now you are Amsha, later on you will become Purana. They say, No. Krishna says, No. Sanatana. Hmm? Like that he says. We are always eternal servant of Krishna. That is a Jiva Krishna Samanda. Another verse is, Jiva Rasarupa Hoi, Krishna Ranitya Das, Krishna Ratatasta Shakti, Veda Veda Prakash. That is another verse. This is also again Samanda between Krishna and Jiva. Jiva is. So it's just like a triangle. Jiva and Krishna, Krishna and Maya, Maya and uh, Jiva. So this is called Sambandha Jnana. If you exactly know the Sambandha, like for example, if you make Krishna smile, then when Krishna smiles, Maya Devi is very satisfied that this fellow is pleasing Krishna. Then she will provide you all facilities in the material world. There will be proper rains, there will be sunlight, there will be moonlight, there will be no Vyadi, no, no Corona. Huh? Now pandemic. <laughs> but when Mahadevi sees this fellow is making Krishna upset, he is uh, disobeying, he is killing millions of cows, aborting millions of children, then Mahadevi will send, you know, take this disease and take this earthquake, take this tornado. Huh? So therefore, there is a direct connection between these three. Huh? So Mahadevi is na mother, nature, and Krishna is father. So if you displease the mother and father, can you be happy? So therefore, this is a connection, three connection, one should see that. So we can have we can have a whole talk on the topic of man, nature, and God. Huh? Prabhupada gave such a beautiful explanation to this. Prabhupada says in one place, if a mother is sitting with a child on her lap, just outside the house, and you are going in your bike, you are seeing her, immediately you will think that this mother is sitting with a child, that means she is married. Hmm? She will be having her husband, maybe husband has gone to office, but you see her. Having a child. Because mother is there, child is there, there must be father. Without father, can mother have a child like that? Not possible. So nature is mother and we are children. So where is father? That is Krishna. Aham Bija. Yeah. Such a logical explanation, correct? No? Anybody's nose will be cut if they argue. Like then, that Prabhupada's arguments are very, very effective. Another time Prabhupada said, some people told Prabhupada, Swamiji, why not we share the resources of, the, of this world and be happy? And what is the need for bringing in God? Just accept whatever is available in nature. Nature is providing. Just accept. Prabhupada said, just see, these are thieves. <laughs> why thieves? Prabhupada said, this is called as honesty among thieves, he said. And then Prabhupada explained, yeah, because imagine if brothers are saying, Are Pichaji ko uda do, hum log bantwara karke, shanti se jiyenge. Ho sakta hai kya? You shoot the father and say that we will divide his property and enjoy peacefully. Is, will it happen? See, if you are if you are wanting to eliminate the father, you will also want to eliminate one another. You will see that. Like Aurangzeb put his father in the prison and then he killed his brothers. You will see that. You can see that. That goes to show because Prabhupada asked the question: How can there be universal fatherhood without? You know, uh, sorry, how can there be universal brotherhood without? Universal fatherhood. Yes. Good question, no? So remember these two questions. How can the, there be mother nature and nature's children be all of us without the father? No? Without father, mother cannot produce. You see, one mango seed you take and put in the ground, you can get thousand mangoes from the mango tree. But without that one seed, can nature, mother nature give you mango mangoes in abundance? That means who gives that seed? What is the verse for that? 14.4. Bhagavad Gita, who knows? Krishna says, not only humans, all 8.4 million species, who is the original seed giver? Krishna says, he is giver. So he is giving one seed, after putting it in the nature, you can multiply that seed. You can have thousands of mangoes, like that. So he is the original seed giver. So he is a father who gives seed, and the mother nature multiplies the number of, uh, you know, that, that seed, one mango seed is taken and thousands of mangoes are made. And the recipients of that is the jivas. Jivas are accepting children, correct now? All of us.
So in this way, we should thoroughly know the Sambandha Gyan uh, without any doubt. From Gyani Bhakta to Rasik Bhakta. Yeah. So Gyani Bhakta means he intellectually studies Shastra, technically. Uh, but he cannot get any Rasa. Shushka Vairagya he may have. Uh, but we should become a Rasika Bhakta. So who is the Rasika Bhakta? Uh, initially, you technically understand the nature, God and everything. Finally, as you proceed, um, you understand that Krishna deals with devotees in a different way. For example, he says, Tesham Satata Yuktanam Bhajatam Preeti Purvakam. What he says? Dadami Buddhi Yogam Tam Yenamam Upayantate. See, he says, for my devotees, I give Satbuddhi. For other jivas, I don't give, he says. Now somebody may say, hey, why are you doing Pakshapad? Huh? How can you do this Pakshapad? Further, Krishna is saying, what he says, he says that, for example, if your mother and father, you are going in a train when you are a small kid, they will keep you a hot pot, prasadam for you, correct? Later on, mother may open it in lunch time and give you prasad. But when a beggar is going, she will give sukha roti to him. Correct now. Beggar says, hey, for your child, you are keeping hot pot for me, sukha roti, and huh? leather is asking. <laughs> Correct now. So, can you argue like that? Sure, but why she is giving you? Because you are, you are her favorite child. She has the right. And for others, she will give sukha. Similarly, Krishna says that somebody is already on the way back to Godhead. They want to go back to God, come to my abode and they are surrendering to me. I will take special care of them. I will give them the knowledge by which they can come back to me. He says. Whereas some other guys don't want to go back to Godhead, even if Krishna is coming as Paramatma, they say, hey, don't disturb me. Huh? Karnam ko, huh? Don't come behind me. Huh? Says, then Lord says, Apohanam. I give them forgetfulness. Huh? What is that verse? Sarvasya chaham ridhisal nivishto matas mrithirinyanam apohanam cha vedaishya sarvair aham eva vedyo Vedanta Krit Veda Videva Chaham. Three things I give, he says. Jnanam, uh, Smriti, Jnanam and Apohana. Yeah? I can give remembrance if somebody wants. And I can give them knowledge, uh, you know, by which they can understand the scriptures. Or if they want forgetfulness, I can give. Like, uh, there are some naughty living entities who just don't want to know about God. Even in our college hostel, we used to go to call boys. Uh, so there was one very good friend of mine. I would go to call him. Exactly before the class, he will lock the room and go away. He knows very well that this fellow will come huh, to call me. Then he will phone, make phone call to him, he will cut my phone. Huh. At the end of the program, he will come only for prasadam. Huh. You know, I, I used to tell him, hey, I thought he may forget, therefore he came to remind you. Ah, I went to library, he will say. So he will go to library, study. He knows what time class ends, he knows. <laughs> you know, <laughs> so that means a mischievous living entity, correct, no? At least only good qualities, at least came for prasadam, at least. Huh. You know. Yeah, and he will say as if he has done a great favor to me. Take a prasad kila ayata na me, tika na. As if it's a very big program. <laughs> no. So, if somebody is a mischievous living, Krishna says, okay, chalo, take your own time, no problem. You see, once Radha Gopinath Prabhu and me we were talking, I asked him, Prabhuji, you know, preaching, we find it so difficult sometimes to bring some people to come to class and become devotee. Then he gave a nice example. He said, his con is like a big ship. Hmm? Already many people have got into the ship, like all of us. And they are all chanting and dancing and enjoying in the ship. Propas is the captain. And he is, you know, just, uh, you know, steering the ship towards the seashore of the spiritual world. Hmm? But some preachers behind are throwing ropes into the ocean. And what is that ocean? It's Nalakapani, Nalapani. It's like uh, uh, gutter waters. And some fellow is drowning in that ocean with a liquor bottle. Somebody is catching a woman and drowning. Somebody is smoking and drowning. Huh? All those fellows are. So you are throwing a rope, pick up the rope. Then he asked me a question, whom will you, uh, you know, pay attention to? Those who are catching the rope and wanting to come into the ship. Should you pay attention to them? Our fellows who have seen the ship, still they are, you know, swimming in, in a direction away from the ship. Whom will you follow? Those who are, ah, those are trying to catch the rope, he said. But sometimes we are so foolish, we jump into the ocean, and you swim behind that fellow who is running away, who is swimming away. You swim, you also swim and go behind him, behind him, and then catch hold of his collar and say, Hey, there is a ship. He says, Malam, like that he will say, Malam. Haran, Nahi Ana. You have seen people like that. Nahi Ana, Are, Dub Jaga, Are, Baad Me Dekhenge. So then what you should do? Chalo, Jo Karna Karo. 
then you come back instead of going and coming back better actually take people inside who those who are ready to catch the rope therefore you now we should actually preach to people actually that is why you will find a rasika bhakta means a devotee who has started understanding krishna's mercy tatami budyogantam krishna gives me the intelligence to understand him by which i can come back to him and if a devotee commits a mistake then krishna says apiche sudra acharo krishna says sometimes my devotee may slip you know and then uh, old habits may revisit him and he fervently repents and cries please krishna forgive me please krishna punish me i will never do it again i will again come back so then krishna says forgive him and accept him in this krishna also says that when um, the uh, you should read this chatur shloki and uh, 10.8 9 10 and 11 uh, verses what are the verses aham sarvasya prabhavo matta sarvam pravartate iti matva bhajante mam budha bhava samanvitaha then macchitta madgata prana bodayanta parasparam ஜிஸ்ஜிஸ்ஜிஸ்ஜிஸ்ஜிஸ்ஜிஸ்ஜிஸ்ஜிஸ்ஜிஸ்ஜிஸ்ஜிஸ்ஜிஸ்ஜி
connect with people and give them krishna consciousness because they are themselves not so satisfied in krishna consciousness you know? so now like one day i told hey go and call their fellow why to disturb him prabhu then he has to start start chanting 16 rounds uh, 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 already we are we have to struggle and we have to why to make him struggle us i said so what do you mean uh, are you not chanting 16 rounds oh prabhu ji madhe mein chhod dijiye usko that means easy convince easy convince <laughs> then i told him are are fool see 16 rounds is like medicine ha huh? अरे दवाई का बिना मरोगे तुम इफ यू डोंट ईट मेडिसिन यू डाई दैट मीन्स इज अ फ्रस्ट्रेटेड डिवोटी करेक्ट ना इज वॉट डिवोटी फर्स्ट डिवोटी हैप्पी डिवोटी वॉट यू विल डू विल यू बी अफ्राइड टू इंट्रोड्यूस स्टैंडिंग टू एनी बडी क्या प्रभु जी बोले पहले बोलेंगे एक माला बाद में चार माला बाद में आठ माला बाद में गया हाथ से सोलह माला करना पड़ेगा उसको आई सर इज इट अ पनिशमेंट सिक्सटीन राउंड थिंक अबाउट इट है <laughs> oh crazy <laughs> that means you know he's a semi baked devotee you know <laughs> he's not he's not himself convinced therefore he he doesn't have zeal for preaching. see zeal for preaching means just like in tawa if you see now hot tawa you sprinkle water <laughs> immediately it absorbs you see in that huh? Similarly, you will see there is no room for Maya if a devotee is a serious devotee. Hein? On the other hand, if Tava is not due to Am, the fire is pull, 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 pull. The fire is not very strong. Hein? You put dosa in that, you know, and then you try to remove it in this way, that way, that way, that way. It doesn't come out only; it is just sticking. How many of you experience? Correct, na? Chapati or dosa? That means a due to Am fire. You have to what you have to do? Increase the fire. Tava has to be very hot. Hein? And if you if, if tawa is not hot, if you put water, water will remain there. It will not evaporate. From that you can know. That's why people check the heat of tawa. How by sprinkling little water, you see that. Similarly, Krishna Kanchi's wood it never gets wet. It's always dry. Prabhu says like dry firewood. Huh? Dry firewood you put in the furnace, <laughs> it will burn immediately. Wet firewood, <laughs> it will give smoke. You have seen that. So you like smoke or fire in the chula? Ah, fire. So you have to be fired up devotee. Huh? Fired up devotee means he has zeal for preaching. He, you wake him up at twelve o'clock. He will sit and start preaching immediately. Huh? He will be ready any time. Huh? Like one time we were going in the uh, train. You know, eleven o'clock. Some people got in. Some thirty, forty young boys. Huh? Suddenly one devotee came to know all are from IIT. Huh? They are going for some trip. Huh? He he just shook on devotee. Prabhu, this is good news, Mala. Are you good news? Eleven o'clock at night. Huh? क्या गुड न्यूज है सब आईआईटी के बच्चे हैं आईआईटी इमीडिएटली जंप डाउन देन ही वेंट एंड सैट विद बॉयज आस्क्ड वेयर आर यू गाइस गोइंग एंड व्हिच प्लेस व्हाट ट्रिप यू आर गोइंग हु इज योर लीडर अमंगस्ट यू प्लीज देन ही वेंट एंड मेड द लीडर डू यू नो अबाउट एस विस्कॉन यू नो वी हैव सम बुक्स वुड यू लाइक टू टेक एंड दोस गाइस आर अवेक नाइट वी डोंट नो व्हेन विल दे स्लीप दे वर अवेक फॉर टिल 1:00 टू 2:00 सो दिस डिवोटी वाज टॉकिंग एंड टेकिंग देयर नंबर एंड यू नो गिविंग हिज कांटेक्ट एंड एवरीथिंग because you know sometimes of course you cannot do that every day but once in a while if there is a golden opportunity a devotee will throw away throw away the watch you know forget the lunch box and throw away the sleep you know? that is called zeal for preaching zeal for preaching means one is like uh, one feels i have i have achieved a great good in my life i should give the same good to that's also yeah yeah direct soap heartedness towards saving drowning souls not just the material bodies ha ah. you are not just interested in feeding food and uh, you know uh, filling up their hungry bellies huh? we should have soft heartedness to save the purpose said no don't save the uh, you know coat of a drowning man he said if you save only the coat you heard the story you know like once uh, a zamindar in a village fell into the water and he shouted help help so they caught the uh, one palwan very strong fellow swimmer great swimmer he He said, "Hey, jump into the water and save that fellow." So the fellow, when he jumped into water, he saw Jamidar was wearing a very costly golden golden coat. Now he understood why people were saying, "Save him," because the coat was very costly. That he is a poor fellow, poor swimmer. So then he caught hold of the coat, and Jamidar went inside water. He only caught the coat and brought out and showed the people. See, the costliest thing I have brought. People scolded him, "You fool! 
you saved the uh, coat of a drowning man, correct? No? If you saved the jamindari, he'll give you 100 coats like this, correct? No? So, what is the meaning of saving the coat? That means, in this world, many people do social service. That is called the saving the coat of a drowning man. Hmm? Like, if you give food today, and the beggar will come tomorrow and ask you, Sir, yesterday you gave me food, give me food again. Then if you give for one week, he will come next week. Isn't it? If you give for one year, he will come next year. If you give for one full lifetime, again he will be reborn and say, Sir, I am reborn now. Please give again. <laughs> it's never going to end. Correct, no? Always he will keep on asking more and more. Hmm? Similarly, in Pune, one rich man was going in a car. And in one particular spot, the car underwent an accident. Huh? So, it hit his knee. And the leg got fractured in that spot. And he was screaming and he told the driver, quickly get, you know, uh, this thing for me. So, that fellow went here and there and found a hospital. By the time they took him to the hospital, they had to remove the leg. Huh? Because fracture was very severe. So, in the spot where he got the car uh, accident, in the same spot, he has made one hospital for orthopedics, orthopedic uh, hospital, which means treating the bones. <clears throat> because his idea was, if somebody else gets a car accident in this place, immediately he can be taken to the hospital. But then later on, when I heard it, I laughed because, you know, is it the only place people will get accident? Uh, anywhere you can get, no? And also, even if you repair somebody's leg, uh, they can get a heart attack, what will you do? Isn't it? Or you repair the heart attack, somebody can get brain tumor. Right. Or somebody can get kidney failure, or sometimes somebody gets multiple organ failure, all organs are going haywire, correct? No? So, this body can you completely repair it. One part you repair, another part gets problem. That part you repair, third part gets problem. So, neither can you offer medical support and completely save this uh, dying body, huh? nor can you feed food and satisfy a person for whole life or million lives. Huh? But the one thing that you can satisfy is clean the heart of the person. Huh? If you clean the heart of the person, then the person will be happy. Hmm? Truly happy. Because once you clean the heart, where will you go? Yeah, by chanting Hare Krishna, if he cleanses the heart, where will you go? Back to Godhead. Will he need any more food? Will he need any more uh, fracture uh, repair? Because he gets what body? Spiritual body. That is the best gift you can give. Huh? Like in Chennai, when I was in uh, my engineering college in Chennai, I used to go in the uh, Mambalam, West Mambalam, one beggar used to be standing, you know, with one broken hand, one broken leg, he'd be standing, you know. So I used to feel pity for him. My, my father used to say, you should not give alms to anybody unless you assess the beggar to be a qualified recipient of your charity. Huh? So I saw he was a qualified recipient, I felt. Why? He, why? Because he can't work, his hand is broken, leg is broken. So I was giving two rupees, whatever the pocket money father gave, I was giving every day two rupees. So six months I gave him. And he was very happy. He knows every morning he will see me. At that time, I, he will get two rupees. One day when I came to the station, I saw him. He was smoking cigarette. With, with, uh, this hand was broken, this hand he was smoking cigarette. And I was shocked. I said, hey, do you smoke? He said, yeah, today I got you know, more than 20 rupees. Therefore, I am smoking. And he said, otherwise generally I don't smoke. Similarly, if I get more than 50 rupees, generally I drink liquor. Like that he said. My Lord, I said, I will not give you a single penny now. That means I am giving money for your sinful activity. Why should I give you? So therefore, if beggars, if you give cookies or prasad, what they say? They want money because they want to smoke. They want to drink. So that means as long as the heart is not clean, if you give some monetary support also, they are going to misuse it. Therefore, you should do something to clean their heart. That's the best service. You cannot do a better service than this. No? Not only that, if you help people clean their hearts, you will see, like in India, if you see why there is poverty, there are two reasons why there is poverty. One reason is people's misdeeds in the past, the sinful activities. That sinful activities in the past are producing fruits now. Therefore, they are suffering. That's one reason. Another reason is, there are, out of 10 richest men in the world, 4 richest men are in India. You know that? Their pockets are full with, you know, crores and crores of rupees. So go and preach to them Krishna consciousness. Purify them. When their heart is purified, they will release the money. And then the whole country can be prosperous. I mean, there is no... These guys are unnecessarily holding the money. You understand, no? So, because Vedic culture is a giving culture, not a grabbing culture. You will always see... Where, as soon as people come to temple, their whole mindset changes. Like I was in the morning, after chanting, I used to roll the chatai, you know. Seeing me, 
there are dozen chattais, other men started rolling. Did somebody tell them? Because Sadbhavan arises when you come to temple, you want to render service. And they are not paying them any salary for doing it. Daily they come and do it. You see? Somebody automatically wants to serve prasad. Somebody wants to roll the chattai. They do it. One day I saw uh, the temple hall became full. Some people were sitting outside. I told them, Andar Akar Baiti, I said. Kya farak padta sab bumi gopal ke hai? They were saying. They didn't mind sitting outside in the road also. Huh? Because in temple they feel sab bumi gopal. They feel everything is uh, divine. They feel that it's like Vaikuntha, like that. So, I remember going to this uh, Radha Govind Mandir in uh, Jaipur, you know. Early morning, 5 o'clock or so like that, there were practically four, 5,000 people. Even today you find big crowd in Radha Govind Mandir in Jaipur. It's the original deity uh, which Radha Govind was worshipped by Rupa Goswami. You will see that. So, the, everybody was circumambulating. We had also gone for Yatra there. So, when we were circumambulating, uh, taking darshan of the deities, one amazing phenomenon I observed there. There were so many, I mean, rich family people standing there and giving out some prasada. Huh? Somebody was giving misri. No misri? You know, misri they were giving. Somebody was giving, one person was giving this round, round white color. What do you call that? Mm. Ah, Revdi, they were giving. Somebody was giving laddu. Round, round, laddu, this much. One fellow was giving Mysore Pak. Huh? Different people giving different things. Huh? Anyway, whoever gave, we just accepted and keep on putting in the mouth. So three circles, you know, breakfast was over. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> complete. <laughs> so, I, I was just thinking, so Vedic culture is what culture? Grabbing culture or giving culture? Yeah. Giving culture. Go to the temple, people are you know, eager to give, you will see that. When we were small kids also, we would go to temple, the pujari will give us this much big gola of chakra pongal, vend pongal, we call it. You know that? One is brown color, one is vend pongal, is salt is one. So both are very, very delicious and hot it will be. Yeah? You offer it to Vishnu, in stainless steel box, big one. Round, 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 you must have made and kept ready. So, as children, you know, of course, uh, we would go to bow down to Vishnu, quickly circumambulate and come and you know, extend the hands. Yeah. And that is the most favorite thing. Huh? Then and there, you'll finish it and then wash the hands and your stomach will be full. No breakfast you need after that. Huh? This much big, big they'll give. Huh? Two big golas. So, the t you find that where there are temples, there is naturally, you find, there is no poverty there. You, in our Pune temple also now, Morning 8 to 1, we are serving prasadam. No? Evening 4 to 9, we are serving prasadam. And even anybody can come and take as many drones or plates also of kichdi. Mm -hmm. Some days we serve kichdi and halwa also. Some days we serve sambar and rice also. Mm -hmm. So, all people, and poor people also eat and rich people also eat. And even IT boys, girls also come and take. We don't do any discrimination. Mm -hmm. So, where is poverty? Tell me. Mm -hmm. Where there is God, there is no? Or because who is the Lakshmi is there, uh, Sakshat Lakshmi, you will see like that. So, on the other hand, you strip God away huh? and only try to do Annadan, you will see the country is suffering from poverty. So many people are trying to eradicate poverty, but you will see that despite all the efforts, there is always you find the uh, Jopati Patis are there. Correct, no? You can see that. So, therefore, we, we have to become convinced that, uh, yeah. Beginning of knowledge is sense control. Yeah. Yes. That is the first step in knowledge. That means if you want to cultivate spiritual knowledge, you have to restrain your senses and mind. If you don't restrain, if you, all, if you are Godas, you cannot gain knowledge. Because clarity won't come. Focus won't come. Concentration won't come. Therefore, first one should control the senses and mind and gain one-pointed concentration and study the scriptures very seriously. Mm. Like Prachetas were told by their father, Prajnapati said, he told them that, my dear sons, all of you, ten of you, now you should, it's time for you for getting married. So you should get married and settle in life and take responsibility of the kingdom. So what did they do? You think they went to Shadi.com huh? to search for a match? Huh? What did they do? They went to forest. Why? To control the senses and purify the mind and then uh, become a uh, Goswami and then they got married. You will see that. Because an uncontrolled person will be like a dog. He has no control of senses. He is not going to have any concentration in life, an ultimate goal of life. Huh? Yeah. Therefore, you find uh, that's the first thing in spiritual life. Brahmachari Gurukule Vasan Danto Guru Hitam. Yeah. Next one. Relationship with SPOG. Else Hi, who is SPOG? <laughs> Supreme Personality of Godhead. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 
else it's only mundane compassion yeah our compassion should be uh, uh, connected to uh, krishna consciousness like in the by in the car when i am going sometimes beggars come and they bend over the window so we open the window and give them cookies so before handing over cookie what i i would tell them say hare krishna so say hare krishna then you give that means you are making them begin their spiritual life mm-hmm. krishna consciousness it's very important always mm-hmm. yeah and shukde gosam is compassion is said what is it was no yes swa anubhava magila shruti sarame ekam adhyatma deepam ati tirshatam tamondham samsarinam karunaya purana guhyam tam vyasa sonam upayami gurum muni nam that's a verse samsarinam karunaya purana guhyam so this knowledge of the shrimad bhagavatam is given uh, by shukde gosam to parikshit out of compassion for the suffering souls so when you are giving knowledge to the people first you acquire knowledge you know, and that knowledge you compassionately reach out to people don't just keep it with you alone uh, yeah please read it what proper says in gorakhpur 1971 shila prabhupad in a lecture at gorakhpur 1971 if there is no preaching there is no bodhiration you can sit down and show people i have now become very liberated soul and uh-huh. chant and meditate that means sleeping this sort of business is condemned by my guru maharaj pratishthara pratishthara this simply cheating he did not approve this kind of business he wanted to see that everyone is engaged in preaching work some sort of preaching work either indoor or outdoor when you are indoor you have to busy writing articles for magazine and proper and so many things indoor and outdoors you have to go door to door make them members make them interested in this movement collect money for expenses outdoor preaching uh, you have to meet opposing elements so many will criticize so many will attack nityanand prabhu was hurt personally but is still outdoor this is missionary work not that whatever i not that what uh, whenever, whenever i find whenever i find some opportunity go to some uh, solitary place and sleep this is not missionary life <laughs> see generally condition soul means what you know uh, as soon as there is some free time one goes to check is there something to eat and after stomach is completely full you eat and then the next thing what he will do sleep that's what he is saying that this is not missionary life actually lorry drivers if you see they go to motel you know in motel after they put food when they sit in the driver seat do they go to sleep no they have to do active work if they go to sleep there will be accident correct no similarly when we eat food it, um, one is supposed to get energy uh, to do some active seva correct no what is the meaning of energy definition in uh, science energy means capacity to do work correct no after eating prasad you should get energy energy means you have capacity to do work not that you, you have capacity to go to sleep that means one has overeat and when you overeat that we want to immediately lie down and that why we lie down that means that much amount of energy is utilized to digest the food so and some people get sick in their stomach and everything then they have to go to doctor also then the doctor's time doctor's money and doctor's travel time and hospital time and doctor's money also and due to excess eating sleeping time all these are waste of time correct no as a proper is saying this is not missionary life is saying go ahead so we should adjust thing not that all right it is going on that's all you have got very responsible business this krishna consciousness it is genuine it is authorized and lord chotanya wants us to do it all over the world the things should be adjusted and keep us always alive to our self responsibility that is missionary life not to give away uh, not to give away to lethargy uh, uh, sleep or overeating and all that we actually use our time every moment to practice and propagate krishna consciousness like that is okay now preaching with knowledge is over preaching with conviction i will do it probably tomorrow i think i'll do it huh morning there is a time for the class or no time question and answers are okay 6:38 with conviction and compassion tomorrow class i'll complete it i think morning huh? this is very important uh, seminar it is it's very so preaching with knowledge is the first one the other two will go a little faster they will they will go shri prabhupad ki yeah.